Uh, well, thank you uh, for resuming the lecture. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was uh, uh, firstly sleeping and later on when I went for my walk. Uh, so the, uh, uh, we discussed the key personnel management, uh, uh, management skills, which uh, include the leading, communicating, negotiation, problem solving, and influencing the organization. So these are some of the uh, basic skills with the project managers need to know about. Uh, leadership, all of the greatest leaders have had done one characteristic in common. It was the willingness to confront the unequivocally the major anxiety of their people in their time. This and not much else is the essence of leadership, Joth Kenneth Galbraith. Now, this is uh, uh, definitely that when you are working with the teams, there will be anxiety with the people, there will be demotivation, there will be frustration. And uh, as a leader, you need to know the reasons and you also need to figure out the solutions for them. Uh, it, very important that while you are working with the uh, project management and project managers, uh, two things which I believe are very important uh, for a successful uh, project managers based on my extensive uh, uh, experience for more than 25 years as a, a practitioner of project management, that the first is your professional integrity, that uh, uh, first of all, you must be knowing very well about the uh, fundamentals of project management and also the uh, project you are doing. Uh, and the second is your uh, professional integrity, uh, your uh, ethical integrity, that you must be a person of high integrity because the transformation leaders interact with team members in a positive and inspiring manner. A leader has a vision that is fueled by an overall confidence and willingness to take risks sharpens and utilize the people's skills. So the leadership is your integrity, uh, that how the people believe in your role, your character, your uh, honesty, dedication, commitment, and how you can become a role model for others to follow. Uh, the art of leading is uh, the art of communicating, that how e uh, effectively you are communicating your message, uh, to your followers and how to uh, you are going to create the influence so that the followers are giving you the desired results. Negotiation, uh, a very important attribute of the leaders that you all the time are dealing with the conflicts. There uh, might be a lot of conflicts interpersonal, uh, interpersonal uh, uh, within the organization, inter-organization, and then uh, with other organizations. So. Uh, these uh, conflicts usually uh, are created mostly uh, on the three or four major constraints of projects that is time, quality, cost, and scope. And as a team leader, you have to be very careful to negotiate and find a win-win solutions uh, for both the parties. Uh, innovative problem solving is again very important. Uh, you will be confronted with a lot of problems uh, which may not be having very readily available off-the-shelf uh, solutions. And for that, I believe that you will you will need to have your own uh, uh, solutions as well. Organization influences are very important. Uh, that how do you influence the team? to create the will uh, so that they are enthusiastically and willingly contributing to the objective of the organization. And this, of course, is one of the fundamental requirements of the uh, leaders. Uh, when we go to the uh, life cycle of the projects, uh, we uh, I have already uh, explained that we have three fundamental stages. Uh, the first one is when uh, we are establishing the project and these are all the activities uh, before start of the project, and then we go to the implementation or execution. And uh, once the uh, the uh, project is nearly completion, then we wrap up and uh, we go to transition phase. And the project is then handed over to the clients and to the operational managers. We will discuss uh, these establish, execute, and now within the establish phase, the uh, two very important uh, activities are you selection of the project and uh, then you confirm the definition, the role 
uh, of definition. So you define the project objectives, scope, approach to mobilize the project. And we, when we define definitely, we also define the cast, we define the roles, we define the teams, we define the responsibilities of different stakeholders and so on. And uh, then once you go for execution, uh, the most important is to develop your plan, project charter or product plan uh, uh, that how would you execute the project. And then uh, while doing that, you are also organizing your resources. You have at the same time monitoring and controlling. And finally, you have a reporting system uh, to the different stakeholders so that you are sing sending all the relevant information to the relevant stakeholders. And once you are going to the completion phase, then the next important uh, is the wrap up uh, of the project and you are now completing the project. Uh, uh, now coming to the establish the uh, first and uh, the fundamental uh, uh, important thing is to, uh, to select the project. Uh, we may later uh, discuss some of the uh, tools and techniques uh, and some of the uh, financial management techniques that how we select the projects, but definitely uh, the project selection in one of the very important decisions of the organizations. And uh, we will also discuss uh, towards the end of this course the project management portfolios uh, or the project uh, uh, portfolios. So uh, we define when we select the product, we uh, project out of a number of projects we are given. There might be a project selection board. There might be uh, in the public sector, we have different statutory bodies which are selecting the projects. And uh, by selecting a project, we uh, define the scope of the project, its objective, the approach to project management. Uh, we also define the project cost, project time, and uh, what are the best practices uh, through which we can execute the project. And uh, then we uh, definitely go for uh, 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 creating a business case that how why this project should be selected and what are the strengths and what are the outcomes of this project. So this we will discuss later uh, in the remaining uh, part of the course. Uh, once we uh, select the project, then we confirm uh, the definition. That means that we uh, now uh, want to form the resources. And then within that, we try to, first of all, identify the sponsors and their expectations. Uh, then we understand the project scope, the project objectives, the assumptions, the cost, time, quality, and all these and then define the risks which are associated with the projects. Once this uh, whole process is done and we uh, get the project approved and we are done, then going to the next phase, that is execution. Now within the execution, the, uh, way, uh, the, the most important phase is to plan the project or developing the project management plan or project plan, which is uh, uh, a roadmap of execution of the project or project, sometimes we call it project execution plan. So within this plan, we uh, de define the project deliverables, that what are the tangible or intangible deliverables of the projects and what are the work plans and the cash plan which we develop in the public sector, that how the money would be required in the project and how the works will be executed in different packages and different activities. And then we try to develop the uh, work packages. And we also, uh, we uh, uh, firm up the, uh, the scope uh, of the project and then we develop this change control mechanism that if there is any con change in the scope, then how can we control it? And uh, there might be some issues uh, within the project, though, then we need to have the issue management strategies and then uh, how the project deliverable will be accepted. So the sign of uh, procedures and uh, processes will also be defined. And within the project plan, a very important part of the uh, execution plan is to have the project risk uh, and mitigation plan. And this we will discuss separately within the uh, risk management part of the uh, course. Uh, then uh, at the end of the day, we also develop the quality plan and the quality assurance and quality control plan that how the quality plan will be executed in the projects. Uh, once we develop the project plan, the next is then to develop the uh, project uh, organizational resources to identify the uh, project teams, their roles, responsibilities, and uh, what are the uh, different time team members which will be working within the projects and what will be their tasks. Uh, we develop the uh, responsibility assignment matrices in which we uh, are defining the rules of different uh, uh, project staff and uh, their relationship with, the, with each other. Uh, then the responsibility uh, uh, matrix is developed and uh, then we give the target dates and deliverables and uh, then uh, there might be need for training of the team uh, members, uh, we definitely go for trainings and trainings and trainings to ensure that the project uh, uh, teams are uh, on the same uh, platform and the same board. 
And then uh, finally, we uh, try to organize the physical resources with the help of land managers and the resource managers. And when this is done, then we go for the execution, the projects, and uh, at the same time, we also develop a monitoring and control mechanism that uh, within the project, when we are executing the projects, we are trying to monitor and control and see that whether the project is going according to the plan or not. And if there is any deviation from the uh, actual plan, then we bring the corrective measure. So this will, uh, the monitoring and control mechanism will uh, go uh, throughout the execution process and uh, uh, we try to measure the performance. We will later on discuss the various performance indices and how it can be used uh, for the project controls. And uh, then uh, uh, lastly, uh, we develop the project reports, maybe on monthly basis, quarterly basis, and annual basis, and maybe on daily basis or weekly basis also. So there must be a very strong project management information system which can provide the relevant uh, uh, information to all the project uh, stakeholders. Uh, the uh, last phase is the project completion, and this is where we normally submit the PC4 or completion report of the project, and then we try to uh, administrative closure of the project, which is very important apart from the physical completion of the project. And then we sign off between the project team and the uh, operational team or the maintenance repair team, which will be taking uh, care of the project after this process. And then we uh, go to the transition state. If the project is shifted from the uh, project team to the operational team, and there might be some uh, new assignments to the project team at new places. Now, in the public sector, uh, we uh, of Pakistan, if we just look back, uh, uh, initially, the development board was established in 1948, and then in uh, 1953, the planning board was established. In 1958, it was updated to the planning commission, and today it is uh, uh, more like um, a planning, uh, planning commission and uh, under the Ministry of uh, Planning and Development and Reforms, there are uh, two main divisions. One is the planning commission and the other is uh, governance and reforms. Uh, we uh, generally have three or four types of uh, uh, planes in which uh, the uh, perspective and vision plane is the normally 25 uh, to 30 years plane and uh, maybe the vision document of Pakistan may be a perspective plane which can span over a longer period of 10 uh, to 15 or even 25 years. And then we have uh, the five-year planes. Uh, uh, every five-year plane we develop, uh, uh, we develop the planes and all the uh, annual uh, planes or development planes are part of this uh, five-year plan. In the roll on plane is uh, within the five-year plan, uh, we have the medium-term design to which the sector and project-wise uh, position is adjusted. So uh, we are reviewing and revising the uh, planes uh, for the five years and then we translate that into annual uh, planes, which is uh, reflected in the public sector development program for development projects and maybe it is the annual development plan in the provincial governments. Uh, uh, we normally have the feasibility analysis, which is uh, given by PC2 in the public sector. And uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, sectors. Uh, there are some guidelines from the government that if the project is uh, larger than 5 million, 500 million, then before start of the uh, project, uh, proposal, we need to have a feasibility analysis first in the form of PC2. And then for majority of the projects, uh, for all projects almost, we have the PC1, which is the project proposal or project digest. And this is uh, the most important part of the project uh, for all the, this is kind of Bible for the project. So all the project may not be having the PC2 or feasibility analysis, but definitely for the, for every project, we have to have the PC1, which is the project proposal and the fundamental principles uh, the base of, of which the projects are uh, approved. Uh, sometime in the uh, complex mega projects, we uh, can have uh, some uh, uh, in the PC1, we can spend a lot of time, and, and uh, the, by the end of the day, if uh, the PC1 is not uh, approved, the entire uh, hard work is then wasted. So, the uh, Planning Commission suggests that for such mega projects which are highly complex in nature, uh, we may bring the PC to our feasibility analysis first as a pilot, and then we see that if uh, this is doable, then we go for the detailed project. So this would depend on the nature of project uh, and the extent, the volume, and uh, so on. Uh, I already discussed that PC3 uh, pro forma is normally used for the, uh, we will discuss this later on. Uh, 
uh, in the project uh, monitoring revision during the currency of project and we have two kinds of pc3 one is the pc3a for the uh, monthly progress reports and the pc3b is for the quarterly every three months we have to submit a pc3 uh, b reports to the planning commission and the planning commission has now developed a project management evaluation system pmes under the planning commission in which the uh, unique id are given to the uh, uh, to the clients, to the departments, uh, executing departments, and they submit their project updates uh, through that uh, PMES system. Uh, then once the project is closed, are likely to be closed, the immediate document we are uh, supposed to uh, submit is the PC for our completion report, and uh, uh, then after one year of the project, we submit the uh, uh, PC5, and maybe after five years, we uh, uh, we go for uh, PC5 every year, and by the end of fifth year, we may go for PC6. But unfortunately, this is not very common in Pakistan. In mo most cases, we finish with the PC5. Uh, the umbrella PC1 uh, is uh, normally under the federal ministry, which covers uh, a larger uh, part of the country and where the uh, same kind of project is repeated. I remember that strengthening of the uh, IT infrastructure and IT systems was. Uh, uh, approved under the umbrella PC1, and uh, uh, then this was repeated for a fixed cost for the country. The public sector development program uh, is uh, uh, comprised of the projects and programs uh, with specific allocations uh, made for each one of them, uh, and uh, that might be the federal and provincial projects, and that will also depend on the allocations uh, uh, provided. Uh, we have some statutory bodies, and we will discuss this later. And, uh, we will have a detail, uh, but there are some uh, important statutory bodies like National Economic Council, uh, Executive Committee of National Economic Council, which is called ICNIC, and normally projects uh, about two billion are uh, dealt with by the ICNIC. And uh, then we have the Economic Coordination Committee of the Cabinet, which is uh, dealing with the uh, important economic issues on day-to-day -day basis. And uh, then we have. Uh, the CDWP, uh, which is the uh, Central Development Working Party, and this is dealing with majority of the developmental projects to the extent of two billion, I think. And uh, uh, in the provincial government, this may be called as Provincial Development Working Party, and depending on the on the uh, nature of uh, projects, uh, normally if the uh, if the allocation is more than 60 percent, I believe, then the projects are dealt with by the Provincial Development Working Party. And uh, at the departmental level, uh, the projects which are, I think, uh, something like uh, uh, 100 million or something like uh, 120 million, I don't remember the exact amount, but definitely, then it is dealt with by the De Departmental Development Working Party or the Departmental Subcommittee, which is uh, chaired by the secretary of the department and uh, other departments like finance and PND can assess them. Uh, the PC2, I discussed uh, already that it is a feasibility uh, for the projects which are having uh, 500 million or more cost, and it is very important for such kind of projects to bring the feasibility analysis first. Uh, uh, it is 500 million, in, in fact. A project-oriented TOR should be prepared and professional consultants should be engaged for feasibility study if necessary. If, uh, if we don't have the in-house capacity to deal with the uh, uh, project feasibility, and then definitely we can hire the uh, services of consultants, and we can also include in their TOR uh, to develop the PC1 for the project also. Now, as a principle, the cost of PC2 should not exceed the cost of 10% uh, of the cost of PC1. Uh, the relevant uh, scrutinizing body and the scrutinizing authority will remain the same for the PC1. In short, all rules and procedure in respect of the PC1 will apply to. Um, uh, uh, mutatis mutandis are the same uh, to the PC1. So definitely the same body which will be approving the PC1 will also look into the feasibility analysis. Uh, all proposal for consultancy, both local and foreign, for preparation of, is, of uh, feasibility studies, conducting surveys should be done on the PC2 uh, and got approved from the competent authority before taking the actual work. And this, uh, of course, is very important uh, in terms of uh, uh, feasibility analysis. The need for utilization and development of local consultancy has been recognized by the government. Uh, the government uh, highly stresses for engaging the local expertise 
In the uh, Economic Coordination Committee meeting held on 19, uh, in, in 1918, 19th July, uh, it was, it was uh, made mandatory that 30% of the expenditure uh, to be incurred on the foreign consultancy should be spent to the development of local consultancy and there should be a partnership of these con consultants with the local consultants as well. The Pakistani consultants and engineers be given full opportunity and they should be the first to be hired for the projects for consultants in Pakistan before hiring the uh, foreigners. So this would give you the, uh, the strength that uh, the local consultants should be preferred in, uh, and if there is no local strength available, then definitely you can go for. Uh, these are uh, some of the PC1 important areas. I'll not read it, but sometime later we will discuss the, uh, the uh, detail of these projects one by one. Uh, these are some of the uh, project uh, authorities we have already discussed. Uh, this is the project control cycle. Uh, we will discuss this in the project controlling uh, that uh, we normally establish the standard first and then we develop the system for data collection, which is monitoring, and then uh, we compare the actual performance with the standards which you will and then we take the corrective actions uh, in case of any deviation. So this uh, project life cycle, control life cycle uh, would work and then we will be uh, maybe revising the standard based on the feedback from the control systems. Now the, uh, the project management and supervision uh, is planning and analysis to have the project that can be implemented to the benefit of the socioeconomic uplift of the society. The project director is appointed, staff of all so these are some of the fundamental uh, guidelines given by the Planning Commission for the hiring of uh, uh, project directors. The last two things that uh, uh, when we are developing the uh, annual uh, uh, statement of the uh, allocations and the feasibility, we are trying to establish the cash plan and the work plan. Now the cash plan tells us that how the money which has been allocated to the project on annual basis will be uh, spent and then the work plan is basically the physical activities for each quarter. Uh, we define the activities and the physical output and for uh, that physical output then we also estimate the cash. So by this way we establish the uh, cash plan as well as the work plan and we will discuss this later on uh, uh, in the lectures. So, gentlemen, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. This uh, brings us to the end of the introduction to the project management. We discussed mainly two uh, important parts. The first was mainly generic about the project management cycle and how the project, man project life cycle is conceived and what are the different rules and uh, important outcomes of each phase. And in the second, we briefly discussed the project management in the public sector of Pakistan, but definitely we will have a very uh, dedicated uh, one hour, uh, I think one hour session for the project uh, project management in the public sector of Pakistan towards the end of this uh, uh, course. Thank you very much. Let me also uh, uh, inform you uh, that this uh, project management course will enable you to prepare for the PMI certification of PMP and we also uh, uh, be enable you to do the projects and I'll appreciate if you have any problem uh, which you want to ask about the project management. Thank you very much and have a, a great time.